Good afternoon, and welcome to the webinar, The Reading Writing Connection. This webinar is hosted by the Winward Institute, and I'm Alexis Pokna, Director of the Winward Institute. It is my great pleasure to introduce your presenter this afternoon, Betsy McDermott Duffy. Betsy Duffy is Director of Language Arts and Instruction at the Winward School and former Director of Curriculum and Instruction at the Graham School, both in New York. She has worked in the field of education for over 30 years as a classroom teacher in mainstream and special education settings, a resource room teacher, and a language arts specialist. Betsy has published several articles in professional magazines. She is also the author of the book, Expository Writing, Reaching New Standards, and is a co-author of a chapter in the book, Multisensory Teaching of Basic Language Skills by Judith Bursch. Ms. Duffy presents at conferences throughout the United States, and she is an International Multisensory Structured Language Education Council, or IMSLIC, teacher trainer, and a certified dyslexia practitioner. You're in for a treat. Thank you for joining us. Hi, and welcome to the Windward Institute and this webinar on the Reading Writing Connection. What I'm going to do is present my slides, my presentation, but at the end, I will be taking questions in the Q&A. So I'll stay around for five or 10 minutes in case anybody has any important questions about the presentation. So welcome to the Windward Institute. And when I say that reading and writing has a powerful partnership, I have to add that this is only true if we as educators design instruction to include challenging text, deliver scaffolded instruction to students in how to navigate that text. And as teachers, we also need to incorporate writing activities about the topics. We not only should teach our students a how writing is actually related to reading, but also inform our children how the integration of reading and writing lessons enhances memory, recall, and learning, thus improving their study skills. It's not a secret. Tell the students about it. I hope by the end of this webinar, I'll provide you with a few ideas on how to produce better readers and writers. So here's my connection plan. I will revisit some of the models for reading, writing, and an integrated model. Then I want to make the reading, writing connection in a bit of a novel way that I think will be interesting to everyone listening and that I hope will resonate with a lot of people. I'll be referencing what is a very familiar body of research for educators, the report on the National Reading Panel, which is still the largest study of reading to date. Specifically, I'll be making the connections from the most promising strategies that came out of the subgroup of the National Reading Panel that investigated reading comprehension and connect them to writing strategies from evidence-based research from decades ago right up until today. I'm going to briefly go over some literacy models, which I am sure the researchers that developed those complex theoretical frameworks will appreciate the brevity in my explanations. I'm not a researcher. I'm a teacher and a teacher of teachers, and I'm someone who loves to design classroom instructional models to reflect best practice. Here, Goff and Tunmer proposed the simple view of reading to clarify the role of decoding in reading. There have been some criticisms of this view, but it's an important model because you have to remember, at this time, many educators believed that strong decoding skills were not a requirement for strong reading comprehension. Some educators believe that if a student's language system was strong, that was sufficient. Decoding for many was dismissed, and thus teachers such as myself were trained to teach reading using ineffectual approaches 
to decoding such as tracing word shapes. And I can remember reading that in my teacher's manual and saying, wait a minute, pole, pale, pile. They all have the same shape, but they're spelled differently and have very different meanings. How is this helping? Guessing at words by looking at the first letter. Skipping the words are just inserting words that a novice reader, who's maybe six or seven, thinks makes sense. Forget about what the author wrote or looking at the picture. Three cueing system. We now know that reading via grapheme, phoneme, correspondences is more efficient. But I want to tell you, on the other hand, I've also met my share of educators who believe that solely concentrating on decoding skills in the primary grades will result in improved reading and comprehension. Well, no. That notion doesn't follow the science of literacy either. Building background knowledge through wide reading and acquiring a robust vocabulary is critical for young children and students in order to develop the level of language comprehension necessary to result in strong reading comprehension. Our teachers should be planning instruction that develops language comprehension while teaching important decoding, spelling, and reading skills. The simple view of reading is such an interesting and useful framework for our understanding of the major components of comprehension. But I think everyone here would agree that it doesn't reflect a lot of the complexities about how comprehension is shaped or maybe influenced by so many other factors. Thus, Hollis Scarborough's rope. I like to use the original illustration because once I heard Dr. Scarborough voice her pride on the one and only original artwork from her research and how she preferred this version be illustrated. So I always use this one. The reading rope, like the simple view of reading, consists of word recognition and language comprehension, but within the lower and upper strands is illustrated the relationship, the connectedness, and the interdependence of all the threads of literacy. The rope is a representation of how these components reinforce one another, and then they knit together more and more tightly to produce an automatic and strategic reader. And I think most importantly, it's important for us to know the great majority of the time. This takes a lot of expert, explicit instruction and student practice. Well, writing is not simple. I always say it's the most difficult of the language arts to both teach and to learn. Writing for most students, for most people, will be the most cognitive, demanding skill I think they will ever encounter in school or in life. The simple view of writing is a theoretical framework that in essence of the illustration, it tells us that writing is about having ideas and writing them down, generating text. And this model has been continually revised and expanded through the years. Here, the not so simple view of writing includes executive functions and self-regulatory processes. This is an illustration of Joan Sedita's rope, imitating a similar rope metaphor as the Scarborough's reading rope. This reading model identifies the multiple components that are necessary for skilled writing. Again, same concept that students develop skills in each of the components of the strands and would practice and a lot of direct instruction, they become increasingly strategic and automatic in their writing abilities. This is a fairly new model of writing. It's organized as a house. It's the direct and indirect effects model of writing, D-I-E-W. 
This model, again, expands our thinking about writing development. But this model makes us all, I think, acutely aware that literacy goes so far beyond simply thinking about the outcomes of reading and writing. It encompasses all the interrelated networks of skills, cognition, and development. Evidence-based writing instruction impacts and improves oral language. This is so important at a school like Winwood, but at every school. We know that a strong language system impacts early reading and writing skills, but we need more research in how reading and writing improves oral language also. We know this anecdotally and through a few studies. We know that the four language systems, listening, speaking, reading, and writing develop in intersecting ways. I like the way Virginia Berninger says that they develop in kind of overlapping parallel waves. I think she calls them waves rather than in discrete sequential stages. And writing proficiency, remember, develops later than the other areas. In fact, in writing, actually all of these cognitive tasks are linked. Strengthening in one area, reinforces another. As I said, writing is the most difficult of the language arts to both teach and learn. Think about it. Unlike reading, with writing, one must actually come up with the ideas, organization, and the vocabulary, the sentences, the correct syntax, all to reach an intended audience. Research and literacy instruction historically tended to focus on reading. I would like to stop labeling writing as the forgotten R. And remember that writing ability is equally important in improving literacy, achievement, and outcomes. Now, thanks to the many researchers that are cited in this presentation and so many others, writing and specifically the reading-writing connection has become more of a focus in instruction. Now, the reading-writing connection may seem like a breaking story, but it's not new news. No exclusive newsflash here. People actually realize the importance of this partnership long before researchers started to study it. But we don't have to go back quite that far. Educators and researchers like Tim Shanahan, someone who I call a valuable resource to all that's education, has been writing about this topic for over 35 years. In the late 1980s, in the publication, The Reading-Writing Relationship, seven instructional principles, it included recommendations, such as emphasizing the importance of teaching lessons with connected reading and writing activities, understanding the power of explicit direct instruction, discussing text content, product and process, as well as writing for an authentic purposes by considering types of audiences also, and planning instruction so students are exposed to various genres and text structures. Also in this article, the notion of introducing writing instruction in the earliest grades and planning with the realization that writing develops over time was underscored in this journal, just like it was in that recent model, D-I-E-W that's formed as a house. Until education really stepped into probably the 21st century, writing, if included at all, beyond the fundamentals, was taught as a separate subject. And I hate to tell you, it still is in many schools. Every week, I do look forward to Tim Shanahan's blog. 
I kind of gush about it and my friends make fun of me. They say, Betsy, you act like you're waiting for the latest episode of Netflix Succession. Well, no, because Tim Shanahan's more interesting and informative and most of the time more appropriate. Our schools, um, on schools that separate reading and writing, one of his blog writers wrote to him and said, what do you think about leaders that separate these two subjects, these two literacy areas. And Tim Shanahan said this, hmm, these leaders, these folks that separate reading and writing, these folks sound like the type of people that would separate Romeo and Juliet, yin and yang, Lennon and McCarthy, love and marriage, Bert and Ernie, spaghetti and meatballs. You get the idea. You have to love Tim Shanahan. So in its review, the panel, the National Reading Panel, identified eight categories of text comprehension instruction of which appeared to have a solid scientific basis. And this concluded that these types of instruction on your screen improved comprehension. Shanahan's early research and the publication on literacy, along with his leadership role on the National Reading Panel, took aim at the request of Congress to assess best practices in teaching students how to read. The panel included so many famous researchers and educators. Thus, it may seem to you a little bit unexpected that the integration of writing into literacy was not addressed by the panel at the same time. But the panel did emphasize that the omission of important concepts and topics, such as writing, and their impact on reading was not to be interpreted as ineffective or unimportant. However, I think if one looks at the comprehension report and examines these eight identified strategies, I want to show you how one could conclude from supporting writing studies that these same strategies overlap into other areas for effective instruction, including the reading writing connection model. This is what we're going to explore next. Let's begin by investigating this connection, a strong partnership by making this connection explicit. I'm going to provide support through writing research on how these strategies connect to good writing instruction. After that, I'm going to follow with an example using the strategies within a tech set unit. Real application for our teachers. Let's look at the first strategy, monitoring comprehension. So in reading, comprehension monitoring, monitoring is where teachers model thinking about text, thus teaching students strategies to enhance their understanding of the material. These are strategies such as what we're all familiar with, rereading, asking questions, having students ask questions, predicting, paraphrasing, uh, summarizing chapters or paragraphs skimming the texts, or maybe looking up unfamiliar terms or vocabulary. Now let's look at the writing connection. Just as in reading, it was found that students need to learn how to be aware and monitor the procedures to deal with the challenges in writing. In writing too, there's evidence that teachers need to model metacognitive strategies, again, modeling their thinking, making it explicit for writing approaches, approaches for planning, self-monitoring, evaluating one's learning and the strategies. Teachers need to be teaching students strategies to develop their understanding of the writing process. Metacognition is an essential part of both reading and writing. Metacognition helps students internalize the strategies. Teachers need to help students activate their prior knowledge 
practice and apply new strategies for their writing in various genres, discipline, and on various topics. Teachers need to model specific challenges that you know students will ultimately face during assignments and articulate the differences among genres and use a disciplinary literacy approach to tackle each academic area. Too often as teachers approach a, a assignment, they just give out writing assignments without explicit instruction or a walkthrough on how the steps and strategies to complete a complex task that involves writing, you know, how students are going to tackle it, how they're going to start. Starting is one of the most difficult points in writing, just to begin showing teachers, I mean, students how to begin a writing task. Teach students and model how to set goals for themselves and persist in further writing proficiency. Students are left sometimes so frustrated and defeated when they can't start a writing process. Um, and also teachers label these students as maybe students that aren't as capable or they're lazy when they could benefit so greatly from a teacher modeling their expert thinking around how to tackle and complete some of these various writing tasks. Cooperative learning. Well, in this context, Cooperative learning is where students learn reading strategies together, but I don't mean one novice learner teaching another novice learner how to read. I compare that, well, it would be like if you need help setting up your iPad or your iWatch, and I'm helpful, I love to help people, I wanna help you but eh, I've never actually used or set up an Apple Watch or an iPad, I'm probably not going to be that much of a support. You're probably better off learning from an expert at the Apple store. It's not so different with the skills of literacy. What is effective in reading instruction is a teacher, the expert, modeling a strategy through whole class instruction in a cooperative learning environment. The class works together and then readers become more strategic. The teachers are using me metacognitive strategies. Students are verbalizing their thoughts aloud in a class with teacher modifications if necessary. They're not having student missteps be verbalized without correction then which happens often when one novice learner is teaching another. This helps students consciously think about and monitor their own reading comprehension and learning. Eventually, they'll be using the strategies in independent reading. And let's look at writing. Well, in writing too, cooperative learning is not about one inexperienced writer teaching another. There is so much more to evidence-based cooperative lessons. Students have to reach some level of proficiency in order to support another student. Explicit teaching by an expert, the teacher, will help students reach that level. And only then does pairing students make sense. I mean, I love whole class participation, modeling on a smart board or a whiteboard, the teacher explicitly modeling and making her strategic thinking transparent as the class works together to complete writing tasks. Modeling and scaffolding in whole class cooperative les lessons, that, that should continue until the teacher feels confident that a release of responsibility to the student learners will actually be a success. That's what creates a vibrant writing community in your classroom, a safe writing community to learn the strategies necessary to write and to read. Graphic organizer. Well, 
anyone who knows me knows I love a graphic organizer. Graphic organizers and semantic organizers. That's where teachers model for young readers how to make graphic representations of the reading material to assist comprehension through the study of text structure. Again, eventually removing scaffolds and having the students try to create graphic organizers on their own. Also, eventually the students just start to think in this organizational pattern. Now the writing connection is that graphic organizers that are built during reading, they can be used for outlining the important information to analyze, synthesize, and then summarize the content read in order to write about a topic more fluently and effectively. Here at Winward, we use simple linear outlines. I recently was going through some of my old teacher manuals and I found a great one very much like the ones we use in a Diana Hanbury King book. If you've never heard of her, look her up. I think she was a true pioneer and legend in our field. Story structure. Now, story structure or a story grammar frame uses the structure of a story as a means of helping students recall story sequence and content in order to answer questions about what they've read, improving comprehension. I'll be showing you an example of story grammar frame in the text set, but story grammar is a visual representation of the main story components, such as time, place, setting, the main characters, the problem, of course, the plan to solve the problem, solution and ending. Now, you will find in the writing research, explicit instruction in story components has also been found to enhance children's, not only their organization, but the quality and quantity of story writing. The new Common Core Standards, I don't know why I always call them new, they're like 15 years old now, the Common Core Standards emphasize the importance of writing narrative for expository or imagined experiences. Thus, teachers need to teach and model effective writing strategies to convey story details, be descriptive, and write using the novel storyline and sequence. Narrative or story writing, it helps students understand not only their inner self, through character experience and development, but in narratives based on the past or drenched in scientific knowledge, students actually gain insight into today's and yesterday's historical and scientific understanding. You could use books such as Fever 1793, which is about the yellow fever epidemic or Soldier's Heart by Gary Paulson about the Civil War. Both of these books contain actually a lot of scientific and medical information as well as his historical facts. Question answering and question generation. Well, question answering, we know it's where readers answer questions posed by the teacher and receive immediate feedback. Question generation where, is where readers self-inquire about various aspects of the story. And this is, applies in the writing connection. We know from a large review of the writing strategies published in Writing to Read and within other studies, the importance of answering questions about a text in writing, but having students self-generate questions and responses also positively impacts quality, and quantity in student writing, both responding to teacher questions and creating answers for self-produced questions help students locate and remember key story components, thus improving reading comprehension and comprehension of the text. And benefiting um, from this strategy is also Fluency in writing. We always talk about fluency in reading, but there's a fluency, a flow in writing also. 
These questioning strategies also encourage students to interact with each other by pursuing clarifications, sharing evaluations of the text, commenting on peer opinions, creating a productive dynamic discussion that really enriches the entire writing community in your class. Summarization. Well, summarization produced some of the biggest effect size in reading. This is where readers are taught to integrate ideas and generalize them from text information, and it results in one of the largest effect sizes for reading. And in writing, summarization means writing about the most important parts of a text, being able to paraphrase that information in a more, you know, a shorter way or a more concise way. Directly teaching, summarizing strategies demonstrates to students how to distinguish essential ideas from in a text from less essential or even how to discount maybe somewhat irrelevant information. Teachers need to explicitly instruct in writing strategies on how to integrate the main ideas in a meaningful way. In addition, teaching students to write summaries improves their memory for the content read. Summarizing and paraphrasing, they're challenging skills, but they will continue to develop over time with your good instruction as students read and write about increasingly complex texts. multiple strategy instruction. Now, even though there's some reading comprehension strategies like summarizing that have big effect sizes, multiple strategy instruction means the approaches should be used concurrently. The previous seven types of instruction are helpful when used alone, but many become more effective when used as part of a multiple strategy method. Writing is a complex task. It requires um, and needs, you need to integrate such things as knowledge of text structure, syntax, vocabulary, topic and sensitivity to audience needs, multiple strategy instruction with teacher student interactive writing is a lively type of instructional method where teachers and the class collaborate together to construct meaningful sentences and various types of composition from diverse text structures while discussing the details of the thinking and writing process. That idea of collaborative learning. Multiple strategy instruction in writing is when teachers plan to use several of those strategies to achieve a goal. An example would be if a teacher wanted to encourage more complex sentences, she might plan to use instruction using sentence combining, sentence expansion, and the use of more conjunctions in sentences, thus a multiple strategy instruction. I think this quote from the National Commission on Writing encapsulates it all. If students are to learn, they must write. In addition to connecting the reading writing research dots to the National Reading Panel report on the most effective reading comprehension strategies, this reading writing connection model, it has continued to render support. It is now over 10 years since Steve Graham and Michael Aber released a meta-analysis that reflected a large number of research studies they emphasized a teacher's need to introduce strategies and realize the power behind having students write about content, making that connection between reading and writing. This report provided robust evidence in these three major areas. Now we'll look at my text set example. The Common Core Standards emphasize the need for 
effectual, effective instructional strategies and techniques for reading and writing instruction. There was a call for students to read and write widely and deeply from high quality, increasingly challenging literary and, and informational text. I think one really engaging strategy, which is popular to deep teach and learn about a topic is called text sets. Text sets are collections of text and various media focused on a specific topic. Though as teachers, we often provide instruction in reading and writing about a singular reading or piece of media, at the end of a text set, it's a little different. The focus is on the study of a larger concept around the topic using multiple sources and media. And text sets can be organized in many different ways. Although I will tell you that high quality text sets are designed to build knowledge of an academic topic, some are arranged as a series of text and other media that become progressively more advanced and difficult, while others have a central or anchor text. No matter what the organization, effective text sets are usually presented in a very thoughtful order with attention to text complexity, vocabulary development, content knowledge, conceptual understanding, and I always like to add motivation. I'm going to illustrate a sampling of a text set, this powerful instructional design to integrate reading and writing about hyenas. And our anchor text is actually a read aloud. It's very motivational. It's Pinduli, and it's about a young hyena. And the class is studying the African savanna. So deep teaching about hyenas, hyenas in hyenas, hyenas in this instructional plan starts with a read aloud to introduce some of the concepts and to motivate and provoke interest in the topic. As the teacher reads the narrative, she gener generates like a, a visual story grammar frame elicited from the students by teaching this book. And in subsequent text and media lessons, the teacher also incorporates a lot of the reading comprehension strategies and evidence-based writing strategies that we just finished connecting. In the upcoming slides and through my narration of the text set, take note of the strategies and the comprehension monitoring cooperative learning, the use of graphic organizers, and having students participate by answering questions, but also encouraging students to self-generate questions and interact with others in rich discussions. You want the students to make inquiries about the text and the strategies. There'll be evidence of reading and writing strategies for paraphrasing and summarizing in this text set that I'm about to show you this example, and it utilizes that concept of multiple strategy instruction. You're going to see so many of the strategies that we just connected. And in my writing course, so please look at that after this presentation to maybe take, I show some videos demonstrating this strategy also and the use of text sets. So this is a story grammar frame. It's not just popping up information at students. It's not just a reveal. What you do is before you pull down the shade on the smart board, you're asking students clarifying questions to elicit the information before revealing it on the smart board. I mean, at this point, the teacher might ask something like, who has the author indicated are the main characters in this story? And as the students provide the information to the student, to the teacher questions, the teacher might type in their responses or acknowledge the student responses, then reveal another section of the story grammar frame. And as you can see on the right of the slide, there's room for board notes. Now I'm referring to board notes as in real time. Information that the teacher writes quickly during a lesson to address 
teachable moment, important terms or definitions, or morphological information. This might be done on a second read, but I've seen well-trained teachers write these board notes quickly and seamlessly during a first read, and they only enhance the meaningful parts of the story, and they don't take away from the reading. Now, following the reading of another section and writing any meaningful board notes, because notice how the board notes will be added to as I go through the slides. The teacher might ask, well, after Penduli wandered away from Mama Hyena, let's discuss the problem that she encountered or faced. Reading on, the teacher might say, yes, although Penduli was mesmerized by the exquisite beauty of the savannah, something was not wonderful and good. And you're using some of that beautiful vocabulary, exquisite, mesmerized, that actually is contained in the book, or adding vocabulary that you think will enhance the student's understanding of the text. The animals taunted her. Using that word from the book, taunted, I want someone to step into Penduli's place or step into her shoes and describe how she's feeling after being taunted. Again, you're revealing more of the story grammar frame or typing it in real time as the students answers and the teacher keeps posing questions. Let's read and see if Penduli has any plan to help herself. Once reading, you might say, how did Penduli plan to stop the animals from taunting her? And see how the board notes are being built on the side. All along, the teacher's asking these clarifying questions about the story unfolding before revealing the information from the story grammar frame. During the reading, there should also be opportunities for students to ask questions and respond to classmates' questions and comments in a rich discussion. So they're revealing more towards the end of the story. At the end of the story, Penduli looks like a ghost. She terrifies the African animals. They want to make amends for what they did. Now let's read to find out how Penduli directs the animals to make amends for their bad behavior. And at the end, the teacher might pose, who can summarize the end of the story using some of our question words? So you might ask, who? Penduli does what? directs the animals, animals to make peace. How? By telling them to apologize and leaving a food offering for guess who? The hyenas. Now, three areas that appear to pay off the most in the area of comprehension are summarizing, paraphrasing, and developing an understanding of text structure which all three areas are targeted when you use a story grammar frame. Students start to internalize the structure of a story with repeated exposure to story grammar frames, just like the one we just saw. And here students are summarizing and paraphrasing main ideas from the story using sentence combining. Here students are also being taught to use subordinating conjunctions to lift the complexity of their own writing. On the side here, we have a teacher copy. A teacher copy is just the anticipated responses. We wanna make sure our activities work. And they're almost like a teacher key in a book, but we're creating these activities to connect to the reading. So we kind of make our own teacher key. And, but often, let me tell you, the students actually come up with better answers than we plan. Then we always use the student answers. You always want to confirm or recast in better teacher language, whatever the student's thinking is. Writing them, again, recasting or rephrasing the ideas in expert teacher language. Added to this text set, was a National Geographic video about hyenas. Always providing a purpose for watching the video or sections of a video, stopping at certain points, allowing for the teacher and student questions and discussions. Um, are you seeing this, Harry? 
TV will turn off automatically. Time left 34 seconds, because that would be unfortunate. Harry says that it's okay, Zen. I always go with Harry. But if I disappear, it's Harry's fault. And included in, in this text set was also an expository article about hyenas. See how they're using various types of text structure and media to compose the entire text set? The teacher has numbered the paragraph. That's a scaffold to help students who are not yet secure in skimming and looking for information in a larger article if they need that support and scaffold. And again, this is a handout that's on the Language Arts Drive at Winward. It's a graphic organizer to enhance comprehension and teachers can assess learning using graphic organizers. At Winward, we tend to use the same type of straightforward graphic organizers in reading through the grades. So that way students can eventually develop the visual on their own through many exposures. There's a million graphic organizers, but if you use so many that the students can't internalize the structure, what good is that? So we tend to use very straightforward ones. This article is a descriptive text structure. So you'll be seeing a graphic organizer like the one in the descriptive or a enumeration row. The teacher used the one on the right, I believe. So remember, just as in the story grammar frame, this is not just a reveal of information to the students. The teacher actually elicits the information from the students first, scaffolding if necessary, looking back in the article, possibly then revealing the information. I mean, we usually write this type of geo in keywords, phrases, and abbreviations because that way it encourages when you're questioning for the students to paraphrase, practice that skill of paraphrasing. And again, board notes, notice them. They're used for writing on the whiteboard in real time, teachable moments, important information. You know, it becomes more multi-sensory for the students. Again, teacher eliciting the information through varied questioning techniques, making sure she's providing wait time so the class conversation is not just dominated by those early responders with their arms coming out of the socket, making sure there's even participation in the class, providing opportunities for students, as many in your class as possible to give their insights and to react and interact with other students. This should be a rich interactive discussion. And for each section, the teacher's making both complex and sometimes simplifying statements if more clarification is needed. Continually adding and developing the discussion and the graphic organizer as the reading continues until the end. Then the graphic organizer can serve as a vehicle for closure and a summary. And you could see here, sometimes we actually give the graphic organizers to the students if they need that support for homework. The teacher can provide a copy of the graphic organizer again. You could see we don't give the teacher copy to the students. And here they're using the main points to summarize using conjunction. Think of multiple strategy instruction, monitoring, comprehension, group cooperative class learning through teacher questioning, students questioning, using questions in the discussion, the use of the graphic organizer, paraphrasing, summarizing, multiple strategy instruction example. Here's a sentence stretching or a sentence expansion strategy. And this could go home for homework as long as the teacher thought the students were ready for independent work. This was a paragraph. It's very structured for those students who needed the support. And for those who did not, they were encouraged to use strategies that they already internalized to complete their own paragraph and organize the information using their own uh, strategies 
and incorporating additional information from other sources. The teacher may feel that the classes would benefit from a similar text set about another animal from Africa, or she might feel the class is ready to choose their own animal investigation, possibly eventually doing a compare and contrast essay, and then having students read about you know, another African savanna animal, or maybe doing an independent essay. The possibilities here are really endless with the strategy. Well, I hope you enjoyed my presentation linking the reading comprehension strategies from the National Reading Panel to the research and writing instruction to date and my text set example of one way to make the magic happen in your classroom. These are effective reading and writing strategies and I hope you feel more comfortable using them. And there's so much more to evidence-based writing instruction than what I presented just today. These are some of the resources that we use to base our program on at Winward, just some of them we've used to develop the program over the years. And I hope you look to the Winward Institute to some of the courses that we offer and for my expository writing course, I think you'll get a better sense of my presentation today with examples and videos. And this is an important quote by Steve Graham. If you teach writing, you get better readers. Now, hope you enjoyed that. I will be staying on for about five to 10 minutes. I will answer any questions in the Q&A, but please have a great evening. And I hope you found this to be informative and inform your teaching. So the statement and part of the question is, thank you very much. I'm looking forward for information on the most effective methods of formally evaluating children's writing. Can you provide some guidance on resources on this topic? Um, we really give so much information in the writing course. And if you look to the courses that are given in the WI, you could find some of these resources, but I think the best way for me to answer this for resources on evaluating children's writing is to write to me and I can provide you with some of the resources that we do, some of our evaluation process and some of our templates that we use. Um, I don't have the graphics up today, but I would be glad to share them with you. And my email address is bduffy, maybe Harry could type this, at thewinwardschool.org. I always say CC Lindsay Kennedy, L. Kennedy at the Windward school.org too, just to make sure when I'm triaging, I do not miss your email. So I would do that and I'll provide you with some resources of what we use here at the school and in our program. Here's another question. The Winward Writing Program focuses on expository writing. Can you talk about teaching narrative writing? Well, we also teach narrative writing we teach writing about novels. We teach book reports. We teach um, how students take the information from that story grammar frame that you saw and can use the most important information to write a book report. If you read through that slide, and I'm happy to share it with you if you write to me, you would read about the story of Penduli Throughout that story grammar frame, as you read it, it becomes a book report. It actually is a summary of the story. And that's why we use sentences to write about the narrative stories instead of keywords and phrases, because it lends itself to such a nice um, summary of the book. And we begin that way. But then students eventually you know, they internalize the structure and the frame and they are better off. They are better writers about narratives. The quality of their story writing improves. So does the quantity, you know, quality and quantity. 
So I think we're finished with our questions. So I hope you have a wonderful evening. And again, please visit the WI, the Windward Institute site for the very, so many valuable courses. Good night.